violence and happenings in the country as we move closer to the general election have become a source of concern for security agencies and Nigerians who fear that widespread violence might mar the conduct of the polls. Now, some states have already been highlighted as flashpoints where violence might break out. And the destruction of item materials by street fires have further fueled speculation of violence as some Nigerians believe it is a pointer to what will play out on election day. TVC News correspondent Uche Okoro joins us now uh, from Port Harcourt. Good morning to you, Uche. Uh, he's our River State correspondent. Uche, we're talking about curbing uh, worrying signs now of ele election violence. What's the situation in River State? Of course, this is the day after the Supreme Court gave a very crucial judgment now as regarding uh, APC's uh, election or elections in APC now for in the in the state now where APC is concerned governorship and all the other elections except presidential. What's the situation in, in River State now? Well, um, I, I must say as a journalist who has covered several elections in River State, now the build up to the 2019 elections uh, is a far cry from what we've experienced in previous elections in River State. Now, on a normal day, under normal circumstances, uh, the two weeks, three weeks to the elections, you have, there's a lot of frenzy, a lot of activity, there's a lot of um, conversation as regards the election. So many events, we journalists will be, you know, um, a lot, a lot busier than we are this, this um, particular uh, political dispensation. So I want to attribute that to the fact that, um, you know, there seems to be some apathy on the side of um, members of the electorate, especially as, especially um, as there are concerns that one of the major political parties, you know, will may not be um, contesting in that election. So um, the mood is a bit, um, you know, flat as compared to the build up to several elections, even. Um, the build up to the um, River State House Assembly by election that was conducted um, um, uh, a few months ago and eventually was cancelled. Even the build up to that election was, you know, the, power, it, it, the, the tempo was very high. But I can say 2019, it appears as though nothing, it appears as though elections uh, aren't three days away if you ask residents of the state and journalists who have covered elections in the state. So um, the mood is a bit calm, everyone's still, um, still very calm. But there are fears that if indeed one of the major political parties, that is the APC, do not participate in that election come Saturday, there are concerns that, you know, this calmness that we're experiencing now may not be the case. So, so that's the situation here in Port Harcourt. Yeah, Uche, let me stay with you uh, on, this, on this issue right now. Now, River State has been identified as one of the states that is seen as a flashpoint when it comes to this election, how, uh, that, that there'll be, there could likely be violence in River State. When it comes to the police or the political parties and all of the uh, stakeholders, what are you hearing? What, what, what steps are they taking to ensure that either this doesn't happen? Uh, are you speaking to anyone? Have you heard anything? Uh, well, Mike, uh, well, uh, to answer that question would be to... to, to uh, well, let, 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 me, let me try to answer that question uh, as safely as I can because... I must say, speaking objectively as a journalist, I must say that I'm quite concerned about the narrative that has come from some of the um, stakeholders in the political scene. Now, River State has experienced, like you rightly mentioned, um, widespread cases of violence in previous elections, even down to by-elections and reruns, so not just general elections. But much of that can be attributed to the fact that members of the political class haven't done enough to rein their members in. Members of the political class, I don't think to have done enough to, you know, to, 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 to speak to their members to maintain um, decorum. Now, as journalists, we encounter, we come across um, several comments, um, you know, being made by journalists. But of course, for professional reasons and of course, um, the ethics guiding the profession, it's not, not everything we can put on air. So, you know, most of the things we hear from the politicians, we can't actually put on air because eventually that would only serve to incite the people. So I think um, the, the, the call once again will be going to the political members of the political class to you know be very be very guarded in their statements. We we of course we watched the rally you know that that happened yesterday. We heard quite a number of comments as well that we couldn't put on air. So you know, it, it's a very disturbing situation. I think the political class really needs to do much more to 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 control their supporters. Well, the police and other security agencies um, in the coming days will we will be um, knowing their plans. 
to ensure security for the elections. We expect to get a briefing from the Nigerian army today. Um, we also expect to hear from the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, as well as the police between today and tomorrow as regards plans for security to forestall um, several cases of violence that we have had. But I have, I have a quite a number of, I have a couple of um, residents of the state who have been around for a long time. Um, they will talk to me about um, electoral violence in, in a short while when you let me, Mike. All right. Uh, if you have to talk to them, just speak to them. Let's let's hear from them right now before we move ahead now because we're trying to manage time. Let's hear what they have to say. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Mike. And good morning, sir. Just introduce yourself. Yeah. Good morning. My name is uh, Honorable Alhaji Yusuf Tanko, the National Coordinator Arewa Justice and Integrity Coalition, and a resident of Port Harcourt for over 40 years. All right. Now, what can you say about electoral violence in River State? Uh, you, you, according to you, we spoke off camera. You said you've uh, witnessed a number of elections. Tell us about violence here. Yes, I've witnessed a lot of elections from uh, Zero Party, 1993, 99, up till date. I must tell you that uh, River's people are peace-loving people. They love peace. They accommodate everybody. But unfortunately, unfortunately, in every society, there must be a Judas. And these Judas are always trying their best to make sure that they incubate miscreants in the society. They deliberately deny our youth employment. Deliberately, uh, 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 they, they deliberately deny our youth unemployment and subject them to poverty to be able to make them ready-made tools for violence. But I tell you, Rivers people are ready for peace. And Rivers people will give the best election so far to the best of my ability. However, however, I am warning and advising our youths to stay away. Anybody that is inviting you to lead or to, to cause mayhem, tell that person to invite his child, his son or daughter to join you. If there is not, then remember that that person is your enemy. All right, now let me ask you, sir. Uh, um, elections, it's just a few days. We're basically counting hours now. River State, we've had recurring decimals and cases of violence. Now, a few days to the elections, as a resident here, are you concerned? Are you worried? Yes, I am worried. I am worried. Sincerely worried. I am worried. So you don't think that uh, we're going to have um, a different scenario play out here this time around? No, 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 no. I believe that our youths are also enlightened this time around. Nigerians are enlightened. They are beginning to understand the difference between white and black. So I tell you, even if there are incitements from the elites. Some are saying there will be war. Some are saying they will see all this and that. I'm telling you as of today, our youth in the state or in Nigeria have woken up. They are not ready to be made as tools anymore. Alright, thank you. Just hold on, sir. I may come back to you. All right, let me talk to you, sir. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Innocent Bagby. I have resided in this city for 26 years now. I work with the civil society organization and thank you TVC for covering I believe this election is going to be peaceful. It's going to be most of the successful elections so far in River State because uh, the youth are already aware of the fact that vote buying is a crime and nobody's interested in buying votes. Nobody's interested in uh, getting involved in violence that will cause their life because once you die, you are off this planet and life goes on. Okay, let me ask you, sir, now. Talk, tell us about um, persons whom you feel may be responsible for electoral violence in River State, but please don't mention any names. I don't think anybody's responsible for electoral violence. It's just misinformation. Because I believe when you talk to a youth and said, I will give you money to do that, the youth go beyond what the scope of what you gave to them to do, and they go into violence. I believe there will be no violence because our youth are well informed currently in State, And I think that the election will be peaceful because Everybody has the knowledge the other person has. So I believe there will be no violence in this current election that's coming up on Saturday and the one that will come up on the 2nd of March. All right. Thank you very much. Well, you've just heard from residents of the state. Optimism, optimism, optimism. Now, the, the question and concern on the minds of everybody, including journalists especially, um, who would be in the front line, is the fact that will history repeat itself or are we going to see, like I asked, uh, like, like I spoke to my, my friend on my left here, will history repeat itself? Are we going to see history repeat itself or are we going to have a totally different scenario play out? Are we just going to have the elections come and go without any negative story? Now, that's the hope of everyone in the state right now and across the country. All right, Uche, thank you very much. Uh, it's for Nigerians to decide how they want to uh, act and behave, but certainly everyone has said they have to behave well in this election. Thank you, Uche, for...
uh, your time out there. We have in the studio former Assistant Director, State Security Services, Dennis Amakri with us in the studio. Good morning, Dennis. Nice to have you. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. I know you've been following uh, the recent fires from Iselangwa South in Abia State to Kwampa, local government in Plateau State, and now to Orca in Anambra State. Yes. Uh, some we've had comments who, uh, from people who are saying that uh, well, it's just a it's just a pointer to to the fact of how things could be when it comes to uh, violence. But others have said no, it doesn't matter. It's just there are just incidences here and there. What are you seeing? Uh, it is a pointer to uh, some of the lack of uh, security uh, for especially electoral materials. Mm. And um, this is not different from it. And um, it will definitely affect because you come to see during the election, people who will come around to say that, oh, my PVC was burnt in there. And um, they have a cogent reason now to say, okay, uh, what do we do? Are we going to just fill out a form and vote or mm -hmm. stuff like that? And um, all the whole essence of all these burning and fires that you see here are methods of rigging where people are looking ahead and trying to see how they are going to yeah, adjust but, but, the results. But if, if you call it methods of rigging, who, who now would you say is responsible for, for this? Because the, the, the uh, PVCs that were burnt in Isalangwa, for instance, you don't know who has it. You don't know if it's a supporter of, of A party or B party or C party, as the case may be. You have to know that um, the, the politicians or the political parties themselves know their strongholds. Mm -hmm. They know their strongholds. They know the area where they are going to be, you know, um, g getting about 80 to 90 percent of the votes. So if uh, around that area, that's why even when they go and disrupt elections like before, uh, they go to areas where they are losing, you know. So if a proper investigation, a forensic investigation is carried out on this, you will see. As uh, I make as INEC is, is also uh, uh, talking about that uh, this shouldn't affect uh, the elections in this affected state and investigations are going on. But talking about investigations, how do you view uh, the expected involvement? We've seen the acting police chief talking tough uh, on this uh, menace now and, of course, trying to cover all uh, loopholes now. But how, wh what do you view? The army and, of course, uh, the other security agencies have also talked about their involvement in the forthcoming polls. How sufficient is it for you? Well, I think um, I know that a lot of preparations have gone into this. I know the police have been uh, engaged in a lot of um, training uh, of their uh, personnel on how to behave and, you know, there is a, a standard regulation, standard operation, operating procedure that has been issued to all of them. Uh, a lot of them have been required to attend classes, you know, and then I know also that the state security service is really, really ready um, for two things, in time, uh, intelligence gathering about all these happenings, and then, of course, knowing the hotspot, and then providing maybe a quick response, a quick response team that could, you know, answer to um, any eventuality. But um, for one thing I can tell you, I think never before, had the security agencies in Nigeria be so prepared for an election? Because the threat that we face in the country for this particular election has been very, very high. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to you, uh, uh, Dennis. Let's get to Ileile in Ketu, where Abosede Omoyi is standing by to speak to Nigerians. Abosede, it's good to have you join us right now. Can you let us know what Nigerians are saying uh, when it comes to the polls uh, around the issue of uh, involvement in violence, what they feel and what they feel shouldn't be. Talk to us. It appears we are having issues connect, connected with. Uh, all Abbasade, right, are you speaking. there? I, <laughs> okay. All right. Why, why is she prepared to join yeah. us? Yeah. Now, back, back to the issue now. now when, when it comes to violence, another. Okay, I, I hear Bosse is back in now. Uh, but Bosse, can you talk to us? Uh, what are Nigerians saying regarding uh, the the nature of uh, security towards the election? 
All right, different reactions from the people at this time. I'm at K2 here in Lagos, and I'll hand the mic over to some Lagosians, some Nigerians, to speak on uh, what the action or reaction could be uh, on election day. Should there be any uh, funny eventualities? Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on TVC Breakfast. So I'm wondering if on election day, I mean, something happens, something strange. Maybe someone does come, picks up uh, the ballot box. What would you do? I'll just leave the place and let. I won't, I, I'll just leave the place and let. So you won't bother about bother securing your vote? No, 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 no. Well, I, I don't like any violence. All right, you don't I like don't violence? Like, uh, I don't like any All right, let's look for some other Lagosians to speak to on this matter. Good morning, thank you very much. Good, Good morning. morning. So if on election day anything, like anything just goes on and you just realize that it affects your vote, isn't going to count, what would be your reaction? I would, I would leave too. To be honest, I would leave because it's not my job to protect the votes. The job of the security agencies. Because I even find it funny when some people say defend your vote. I can't defend, I can't defend. Anybody that is snatching a ballot box must be very desperate, must have been paid a huge sum of money and is willing to do anything. I, I, I take away anybody that is trying to stop him. So in that point too, I don't know whether he has a gun, I don't know whether he has a knife, I will just stay back and leave it to the security agents to undo it. All right, well, uh, another view right there. Let's uh, get to more Nigerians and find out what uh, they could do in the case of uh, any eventuality. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us on yeah. TV Breakfast. Yeah, in right. we youth in our street, we, we, have, we have mobilized ourselves that we, have, we are going to protect our vote to the end because if you snatch my vote, my vote don't count. It will be painful to me. So that's what we do in our street. Right. Well, we, we've heard that some youth are already mobilizing and getting ready for this election to defend their votes and ensure that their votes count. Would you allow yourself now, uh, Mr. Gentleman, would you allow yourself to be used for any form of uh, violence during I election? don't think, I don't think. That will never be possible. The possibility is not there. And presently, when we are talking about voting in Nigeria, our voting doesn't count to me. You think so? It doesn't count. But INEC has assured us that the election to be free and fair. Are you not humans? They have been giving us false promises and falsehood to me. But you know, they've introduced some measures to ensure that there isn't corruption. For instance, you are not allowed to take your mobile phone to the polling booth and, you know, such policies. Still, still, they will ring it. As for me, our vote doesn't count. Yeah. All right, then. Some people believe their vote don't count, but INEC has assured at different times that uh, indeed people's votes would count and the security agencies have said same. Thank you, Abbasidi, for the, you know, for, for that uh, analysis Various there. Various reactions, Mike. Yeah, yeah the, the last person who spoke, uh, if you listen to the vibe, apart from what he said, if you, look, if you look at his face and the vibe, it looks like he's so confident, he's so resolute that he has lost no faith in the system. No Whatever they say, he doesn't believe. Uh, Dennis, I wonder what you feel about this. And that's just one out of so many Nigerians who feel that, well, when it comes to this election, some people just feel the, the results have been, have been concluded, yes. you know, and all of that. Yes, and that is what INEC is supposed to um, enlighten the public about. Because the so there's still hope for people like that? Uh, well, I don't know if they are going to gather these people. We have only three days to the election. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this, like I've been mentioning this, political education is supposed to have come months before now. You know, even so, so many people don't know how to vote. Uh, right now, you cannot use the thumb again. You are going to use exactly. your index, yeah, finger. index finger. These are all things. And, you know, some people don't know that if you vote and then it is, it is not in the box, your vote is voided. You know, so it, it, there's a lot of things for people to know. But, and if you don't tell them, we're in trouble. Mm. But, but from the uh, clip we just saw now, live, by, by the way, of course, um, in Lagos, there's also a sense, and does it help if, you know, you have to go with that mentality when you go to the polling booth on Saturday, for example? Be, does it help that one must be prepared for any eventualities? Eventuality. No. Uh, that's where the security people come in. You know, um, and again, that has been a situation of perception again. The security people are actually there to make sure that there is no problem. Uh, there is nobody coming to carry ballot boxes and running away and stuff like that. And because of the way they are going to deploy their people this way, uh, this time, uh, they are going to be out of the periphery 
where the voting is taking place, so that you don't scare people. I don't want to vote when there's a gun, you know, uh, uh, ranged on my head. And you don't have a sense of fear. Yeah, and you, you know, many people will feel that, oh, we've sent 30,000 30, policemen over there. Uh, it will give confidence to people and they will not be scared to go and vote. But that is not true. Because when you uh, put that large number of uh, security people, there are people are really scared. If a single bullet is fired, mm. you know, people stay home. They will say, ah, let me not go and uh, be caught in the crossfire. So um, we have to, uh, the security agencies actually have to know how to arrange themselves, uh, do their postings and then deployments and stuff like that. And then, of course, give uh, free reign to people to go and express their, uh, uh, their rights as citizens. All right. Uh, the, uh, some others have said, well, we haven't, we haven't tested the system where <laughs> Nigerians vote even without uh, security. We, uh, others will say, well, maybe we have not matured to that level where Nigerians see election as a festival. Let's yes. just go there and have fun mm -hmm. and then go back home. Where, at what point do you think we'll begin to conduct elections without necessarily deploying massive security uh, personnel to elections? You know, there are two things to it. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, the Nigerian citizen have to understand okay. that... Elections only is not democracy. The American Consul General have even said it in his press conference. That democracy come, you know, means a lot of things. It means citizens' engagement on those people you are voting into, mm. into power. How to engage them, how to uh, make things better. Because it's supposed to be a government for the people, mm. uh, for the people uh, by the people. And we have not got to that level yet. You know, we need to... Um, uh, 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 mobilize the citizenry to do it. Now, uh, if we have uh, grown that habit of uh, ballot snatching, toggery and everything, mm -hmm. there are other technological means by which we can easily conduct elections without even deploying one policeman. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, data banks, management of data mm -hmm. in the country, mm -hmm. You go to the you go to you go to the bank with your uh, you with your ATM card mm -hmm. and you withdraw money and you go away. You don't need a policeman to follow you to to do that. Exactly. You know, that's a so, normal way of life, and it should extend. And it's a normal way of life. That but there are data, transactions on the phone right now. Yes, that right. data is available to us now. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Sometimes we are so stiff to changes. Otherwise, you know, mobilize all those data. Get people, we vote, you can lie down on your bed and vote without going anywhere. Well, that, that will be the day, uh, <laughs> you, you know. Because can you, let me, let me, let me, let me strengthen this. Yes. Right. Can you, can you, can you uh, uh, withdraw money from my account with your PVC, uh, with your ATM? It's not possible. Exactly. Mm. So if I go ahead and vote with my card, nobody is going to duplicate it. Mm. And this data is recorded. So that you don't have to play with it. Hmm. You can't the, manipulate it. You cannot manipulate it. And then people will just announce the, announce, announce the right, results. Right. We've run out of time. But, you know, that's for during the elections. What about before the elections and after the elections? How much will the Peace Pact now sign in help? Another event is going to happen today. Will it be reliable to say, to bind this on the parties, the candidates, and their followers? It will bind the major candidates. Their followers are the problem we have in this country, you know, whereby they make all kinds of statements. Some people see it as a do or die. Some people see it very, very personal, you know. You are not going to rule over a state or the country because it's your father's estate. It is the decision, and this is the problem we're having. Many people have to come back to the mindset that voting is the right of the citizen to choose their leaders, not leaders trying to impose themselves on the people. So these are the issues, and they create security problems for us when uh, people and the politicians are using that ignorance on people, you know, of people to uh, do what they have to do. All right. Uh, Dennis Amakri, former assistant uh, director of the SSS 
a nickname DSS. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much, Have a great Mike. Day. Right.